The last thing we're going to do is what we call properties of matrix vector multiplication. Um, and there are a few properties. Can you guess what we're going to need in order to do matrix vector multiplication? We're going to need a matrix, a set of vectors. If I'm going to do matrix vector multiplication, and perhaps we're going to call this column version, can you guess what size the vectors are going to be? n by 1. And then also, for good measure, why don't we give ourselves some scaling coefficients so we can figure out how those things mix. So we're going to have three properties. One of them is going to be called distributivity, which says that if I take a matrix and I multiply over a vector addition, this is kind of interesting. How big is this matrix? m by n. How big is this vector? n by 1. How big is this one? n by 1. Where is that addition happening? In what space is it happening? What size, though, is what I mean? Can you guess what we're going to say about this? The result for sure is an n by 1, but if I call this distributivity, can you guess what we're going to say? And this is where things get a little crazy. How big is M, uh, uh, matrix A? M by N. How big is vector X? N by 1, which says this entire vector is now an M by 1. How big is this vector? M by 1. Are these additions the same addition? No, they're fundamentally different additions. One of them is happening in the domain space. The other one is happening in the <coughs> range, aka the codomain, RM. Right? They're different additions, which is pretty fascinating. Right? Even though they look innocuous and they look the same, they're not. Okay, so what does that say about matrix multiplication? What's the claim that we just made? Distributive. Distributive. Next one, we'll call it scalar multiplication. Some people call this homogeneity. If I take A and I multiply by a scalar coefficient times x, here's a question for you. How big is this vector? n by 1, how big is the matrix? m by n, how big is this thing? 1 by 1. This dot right there, what's that dot? Scalar vector multiplication. Where is that dot happening? In Rn. Okay. Can you guess what I'm about to say? This thing is an m by n. This thing is an n by 1. Where is, what's this right here? Matrix vector multiplication. What's the size of the output vector that is achieved by that matrix vector multiplication? That's an m by 1, which says this thing right there, what type of operation is that? Scalar vector multiplication. Where is it happening? Rm. This dot right here happened in Rn. This dot right here happens in Rm. This is a domain space scale. That's a codomain scale. They're different. What's the claim of this theorem, however? That they're numerically equal to each other. That if I first do the scalar multiplication and then I multiply by the matrix, that's equivalent to first multiplying by the matrix and then scaling. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you could physically count them if you'd like. So let's say that n was um, 10 and m was 5. How many, if, so let's just do this in our mind. 10, I don't know which I said which was first, but let's do five, uh, 10 by 5. How many individual multiplications in R is happening right there? 5. How many individual multiplications in R is happening right there? Is doing 5 multiplications the same thing as doing 10 multiplications in your life? They're different. And yet, algebraically, I can do them first in the domain, or then in the codomain, or in this case, the range. It doesn't matter which. The C's carry through that operation. Right? We'll get more into that as the quarter goes on, but it's, it's, it's an interesting paradigm. Students think, I think a lot of students see this at first, and they're like, oh yeah, that's trivial. And I'm like, no, it's not trivial. This is, this is all about maps. So in this case, we have m times n.
Can you guess what happens if I take a linear combinations in vectors in the domain? This is the, um, what you might call the canonical concept of linearity. Can you guess what happens if I take C1 times X1 plus C2 times X2? And maybe I should actually physically put the dots down so that I'm not a bum mathematician who refuses to be explicit. I would ask you, what is this operation right there? In what space? n by 1. What about this one? Scalar vector multiplication in what space? n by 1. This addition happens in n by 1. Can you guess what I'm going to say if you combine those things? What could we do for linearity? What's the whole concept? We can bring out the addition and we can also bring out the scalar multiplication. So this would be what? C1 times A times x, sorry, I should have done, plus c2 times a times y. Question, this right there, what operation is it? Scalar vector multiplication. What space is that scalar vector multiplication happening in? Rm. It's not Rn, it's Rm. It's the output space, right? This thing right there, what is it? Scalar vector multiplication, what size is the output vector there? It's m by 1. Because this was an m by n, that was an n by 1. Take linear combinations of the columns, I get a column vector that has the same number of rows as a, and then I multiply by a scalar. That vector multiplication, scalar vector multiplication, now happens in Rm, which means what about this addition? Where's that addition happening? That addition is happening in R M. These are different. This addition right here is not in the same space as this addition right here. And formally speaking, the reason we say that is it's not equivalent. Adding five scalars is not the same thing as adding ten scalars, right? More work is being done, depending on what size they are, right? If the matrix is square, then you can say that the domain is equal to the codomain. It's the same space, in which case you're actually staying in that. But that's not the, the statement in general matrix multiplication, right? You're mapping Rm from Rn, or you're mapping, starting in Rn, you go into Rm. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave the proofs as an open challenge, open to you. And if you'd like, you can make me do some work on that. Um, also, here's a challenge. State theorem 18, maybe we should call it R. We'll call this theorem 18C. Can you guess why I call this theorem 18C? Column, state theorem 18R, 1, 2, and 3 for yourself. What's the statement of theorem 18R? Instead of doing it in columns, we do it in rows. Instead of multiplying on the right by the vectors, I would multiply on the left by the transpose of the corresponding vectors of the appropriate sizes, right? I'll let you do that for yourself.